Hi everyone, we are now going to look at chapter five and this is where we start talking about the time value of money. So in this part of our presentation, we're gonna be talking about the theory behind it. I'm, we'll be doing another presentation that will show you how to use your calculator to complete the computations that we'll be discussing here. So some of the key concepts and skills that will be coming out of this session will be determining what we call future value of an investment that you make today or we could determine what something is worth today based on the value we want it to have at the future. We're going to find the return on an investment and calculate how long it takes for an investment to reach a desired value. So first we're going to tackle future value and compounding. Then we're going to tackle present value and discounting and then some other little caveats when it comes to this concept of present and future value. Now, if you make a timeline, okay, just draw a timeline. Grab a piece of paper, draw a straight line. The very leftmost location of your, of your line, you could put a vertical line going through, and we call that present value or time zero, okay, today, or the day it's going, the day you want to know something is worth in the current sense. Then we could go all the way to the right on the timeline, draw a little vertical line, and we can label that future value. That is what something, a dollar, will be worth at a later time. In the world, money is always incurring interest, unless it's hidden under your bed. And even then, okay, there's always interest occurring. So in finance, we are always attentive to interest that occurs from time zero to some point in the future. Time zero being present value, future value being that later date. The time in between interest is occurring on this. Sometimes it's referred to as the discount rate, sometimes cost of capital, opportunity cost of capital, and even required return. So these are some descriptive words finance uses to talk about interest and interest rates. And we're going to see them as we proceed. So that's why we introduce you to this concept now. So what are we talking about here? Again, like I said, if you draw a horizontal line, the most, the leftmost um, point on your timeline, to the left, present value, that's time zero. To the right, go to the rightmost point, you know, place on your line, make a vertical line, future value. Suppose you invest a thousand dollars. So today, time zero, say you put a thousand dollars in your savings account. It's going to stay there for one year and earn 5% interest per year. What is the future value or what is that thousand dollars worth in one year? So that's a very simple interest calculation where if we take the principal that we invested of a thousand times 5%, 0.05, which is an annual interest rate, and interest rates are always stated in annual terms. So that's a 12-month interest rate. Since the money was invested for one whole year, we need to know one whole year's worth of interest. So $50. So at the end of one year, the future value of that $1,000 
is 1050. Now in the real world, we don't take the $50 out and say, okay, now earn another thousand, now, now earn another um, year's worth of interest. No, instead we do what's called compounding. And compounding says, not only will you earn interest on what you originally invested in the second year, but also any interest that has been added to your investment at the end of the first year. So going into year two, it says, suppose you leave your money in there for another year. You're really going to have earned two years worth of interest. Okay. The first year would be a thousand times 1.05. Now multiply the 1,050 times 1.05. If you just invested the thousand again, you would have only had eleven $1 hundred dollars, fifty for year one and fifty for year two. But since you reinvested not only the thousand dollars you originally put in, but the fifty dollars as well, you earned two dollars and fifty cents on the interest from last year in this year. So it's always the balance of the investment that will earn interest in the next year, not the original investment. That's what compounding interest is. And that's what this whole chapter is about. So if you take a look, we're starting to create a formula here. We can do this. We know that the interest rate is 5%. If we take the investment 100 plus 5%, that would be 1.05. What if we want to know how much that thousand dollars will be worth at the end of 10 years instead of one or two years? Well, we could raise it to the 10th power because it's like we're multiplying 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05 10 times. So if you know how to do that on your calculator, on my TI-83 plus, there's, it looks like a little carrot top character. You just put 1.05, hit that, 10, and it gives you a number of 1.62889467. Well, that's how much $1 is worth if it's invested at 5% for 10 years. We want to know how much is $1,000 going to be at the end of those 10 years. So multiply the results you received by the thousand, $1,628.89. So you can see, you can use a formula to calculate future value of an investment you make today if it compounds interest at the same interest rate for a period of time. And here's our formula. Future value is always FV. PV is your investment amount today, present value before it was $1,000. We then multiply PV times one plus the interest rate, and make that as a decimal, to the T or number of periods power. So we could do this for any calculation we want to determine future value. So they, this slide should have been before, <laughs> but this is what I was talking about. A simple interest calculation just says, always calculate interest on the original investment in year one, two, three, four, and five, which doesn't make sense, right? Because as an investor, you just don't want to earn interest on your original investment, but you want to earn interest on 
your original investment plus all interest earned through the beginning of that year. And that's where compounding comes in. We already talked about that. Oh, they do have some calculator stuff in here. Now, for those of you, they demonstrate the BA2+, plus, the Texas Instruments BA2+. Plus. I have a text, Texas Instruments TI-83+. Plus. Normally, you need to, and I'm not familiar um, with the BA2+, plus, so I'm assuming these are right on the face of your calculator, if they aren't. If they are not, you should have an apps. Mine is blue and it's the second column, third row down, blue apps button, APPS. I click on that, applications. The very first one I select is finance. So I'm gonna hit the number one because I wanna do finance calculations. The next one I want to select TVM, time value of money, solver. So that's a one. And then you're going to get a listing of variables. Now, your author uses T to represent periods. Calculators usually use N as the number of periods or for that last um, problem we were working on, two. I is your annual interest rate. And you don't put it in as a decimal, you just put it in as a number. So I'm gonna put it in as a five. PV means present value. How much money are you putting away at time zero? And that's our $1,000. Now you're going to see a, a variable PMT, ignore that. That doesn't play any part in the calculations we're doing right now. Now, how you maneuver and go up and down, up in the right corner, you probably have some arrow keys. You can use those to maneuver up and down. And that's what I'm doing. And then I come down to FV. And that's what I want to solve for, the future value. Now, um, okay, to solve, now, oh, it says there P slash Y, always leave that as one, I slash, or C slash Y or I slash Y equals one. Okay, so always, if you have those variables on your screen, um, P slash Y has nothing to do with our, our calculation. C slash Y means you compound more than once a year. So in our example, interest is earned for a year and then it's added to the investment and then interest is calculated again for another year. Sometimes interest could be calculated and added every three months quarterly or every six months or sometimes once a month like your credit cards. So we are going to only compound once per year so just leave those as one. And then if you have a PMT and the words end and begin, don't worry about those. You could ignore them for now. So you're focused on the N, the I, the PV, and right now your cursor should be blinking where it says FV equals. Now you're going to solve. Now calculators are different with solving. My N, where I have a, a, where my enter key is, mine's down in the bottom right hand corner. It has a green word that says solve. So that means I have to hit my green alpha button that's in the left hand side, first column, second down, and then enter and it will solve. Future value is 1102.5. Now notice there's a negative there. That doesn't mean you have negative cash. When these calculators are developed, in finance, we assume money's coming in and then money's going out. So that's just indicating when you take your money out, you draw it out as a negative, you'll take out 1,150. So it doesn't mean it's a negative number. It's just the way the calculator was developed. 
So if you want to use a formula, you could use a formula, but you also have this great app on these calculators we require you to have for the course. So you can do very easy calculations. So there, here's another example. You invest $1,000 from the previous example for five years. How much would you have? Now you can use the formula we talked about, take 1,000 times one plus the interest rate to the number of periods power, and it'll give you your number. Or using your application, all you're going to do is go up, change the N to five, make sure your interest is at five, and I'm using my arrow keys to go down. $1,000 is my pre uh, present value. I'm gonna use my down arrow future value alpha enter, and I get 1,276.28. Okay, and it's just showing you that as the, as the um, periods increase, so does the overall money. And if this was simple interest only, so if you calculated interest just on the $1,000 for five years, it would be $50 a year, 50 times five, $250. But since you're compounding it, you're earning interest on that prior year's interest, it's $1,276, $26 more. Suppose you had a relative deposit $10 at 5.5% interest 200 years ago. How much would the investment be worth today? So to get out of your apps, I have on the very top left-hand side, a second button, it's like orange. And then I hit mode because that's how I quit out of my um, apps. But you may have a, um, it was back here. Oops, I'm sorry, let me go back to the calculator one. It, you may be a clear, a CLR TVM. So two buttons that you have to do for that. That might be on the BA2 plus. Okay, so I'm gonna use my formula and I'm going to take 1.055, a little carrot top to the 200th power. And then I'm gonna multiply that result times $10. And that's how we get the $447,190, I round it. You could do the same thing in your apps, finance, time value of money solver. Now my N is 200, my interest rate is 5.5, my present value is 10 because 200 years ago, they invested $10. Use my arrows and then solve, alpha, enter, and I get the same answer. So we're showing you if this was just simple interest, okay? So simple interest, you would have only earned $120. <laughs> but because it's compounded, you earned an extra $447,070. So that really shows you the impact of how compounding adds to the total value of your investment. Suppose your company expects to increase unit sales of widgets by 15% per year for the next five years. If you currently sell 3 million widgets in one year, how many widgets do you expect to sell in five years? So this is not only for determining money, but also production. Because remember, you're going to make 15% more widgets in year one, add those to the 3 million, then 15% more in year two, add those to the existing from year one, and the three million and the extras you made in year one. So they keep accumulating. So N is five, whoops. So I'm gonna go up into my app and I'm gonna put five in N. Inter interest is 15% because that's your increase. P 
PV is 3 million. That's how much you currently make. And if you go down to future value, alpha enter, you get your total amount. So now we're showing you the practical use of this in your planning and predicting. You could have done this just with simple math using your calculator with no apps. Take 1.15 carat top, five years, enter, times 3 million. That's the formula for future value. You get the same result. So we already defined the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Suppose you have $500 to invest and you believe that you can earn 8% per year over the next 15 years. How much would you have at the end of 15 years using compound interest? So you can do this in one of two ways. You can use our formula 1.08 carat top 15. Take that result times $500 and I get 1,586.08. Now I could double check myself by using my apps. So I'm gonna go into my apps, finance, TVM solver, N is 15, interest rate is eight. PV, today's investment, 500. Using my arrows, I'm gonna go down to future value, alpha, enter, and I get $1,586. That's compounding. How much would you have if it was just simple interest? Well, I'm going to quit out of my app, go back to my normal screen on my calculator. 500 times 0.08 is $40 a year. 40 times 15 years would be $600. So if you um, were using simple interest, $600. Using compound interest, we take the ultimate amount we get minus the original investment of 500 and we get $1,086. So you earn $486 more because it's compounding. That's why we like it. Okay, so that is future value cap computation, how we do it, and why we do it, because we compound interest on investments. Everything's compound interest in the world. I'm going into, oh, I like that one. If you take a look on page 132 of your book, before we get into present value here, I think I'm gonna switch and share another page with you. Just bear with me a second. Find that. Okay, let me share this. Come on you. I'm gonna let me. Share, hold on one second, sorry about that. Oh, there we go, stop sharing and now I could share my Word screen, there it is, okay. Okay, so on page 132, here's another practical example. Tyco Corporation currently pays a cash dividend of $5 a share. Now remember, dividends, are on the stock of the company, and that's per share. You believe the dividend will increase by 4% each year indefinitely. How big, so how, what will be the dollar amount of the dividend in eight years? So again, if you're like, I can't picture this, draw a line. I'm going to try to draw myself a line here. Okay. Down this end, we have $5. That is present value. What we want to know is how much will it be worth in eight years? 
if it increases, sorry, 4% each year. So again, five is the present value times one plus 0.04. And I don't know off the top of my head how to make my little carrot up. I used to and I don't have it here, but that's okay. You could know what I mean here to the eighth power. There we go, eighth power. Okay. So 1.04 to the eighth power times five, oops, Try that again, 1.04 to the eighth power, I'm getting 1.36856905. Multiply that result by the $5 investment dividend, I'm getting $6.84. Okay. So now you can, oops, that's really bad, huh? So not only can you use it to determine the value of a savings account investment, um, uh, uh, some investment that will earn money over time, a one-time money, you deposit money today and what will it be worth in the future? But you could do that for production, you could do that for dividends. And we saw a couple different examples. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm gonna go ahead back over to my PowerPoint. And let's continue now with a different calculation. We showed you how to calculate present value or a future value. You know what you're investing today at time zero, what's it worth in the future. But now we're gonna show you the opposite. What if you know what it is in the future I need $5,000 at the end of five years. How much do I have to put away today in order to reach that, given a certain interest rate? So we can calculate this by rearranging that future value formula. So now, remember future value is present value times one plus r to the nth or t power, t being the number of periods. So if we just rearrange our formula, present value equals the future value, so the amount we know about, what's it worth in the future, divided by the one plus interest rate to the number of periods. This is called discounting. So we use the interest rate because remember, future value, what does that include? Think about it. Your original investment, plus all the interest earned on it. What we're doing with this calculation is we're discounting or pulling out all the interest because future value has interest in it and that's what we know. So we're trying to pull out all the interest and find the original investment. And that's where we get the term discounting. When we talk about the value of something, we are talking about the present value unless we specifically indicate that we want the future value. So keep that in mind. So suppose you need $10,000 in one year for a new car. If you can earn 7% annually on an investment, how much do you need to invest today? So future value, so if you draw your little timeline, the rightmost has 10,000 now at it, the future value. The leftmost is going zero, I, at time zero. I, that's what I need to figure out. How much do I have to invest today? So I'm going to take 10,000 divided by 1.07, because it's only for one year. So you need to invest 9,345.79. Now using your calculator, go to your apps, finance, TVM solver, N is one, interest is seven, present value, leave at zero. That's what we have to calculate for. So make it a zero and then use your arrow keys, go to future value and put $10,000 because that's what you want to have at the end of one year. 
using your arrow up key, go back up to PV so that the cursor is flashing. Now you can alpha, alpha enter to solve and you get 9,345.79. So it's just a different approach because we know different information. Here's another example. You want to begin a savings for your daughter's college education and you estimate she will need $150,000 in 17 years. If you feel confident that you can earn 8% per year, and remember the assumption here is that you will earn 8% every year every, in those 17 years. How much do you need to invest today to reach $150,000? Now, if you're sitting there going, well, why don't you just put money in each year? That's not what we're asking here. That's a different type of computation. We want to put one amount away today and have $150,000 in 17 years while this is earning 8% per, uh, interest. Since I'm still in my apps, I'm going to use my arrow key and go up to N and make that a 17. I'm going to make the I an 8. Present value, I'm going to reset to zero. If not, I don't think it'll let you, it might give you an error. So reset it to zero. Use your arrow keys to go to future value, put 150,000. Use your arrow keys to go up or down to, so that your cursor is at present value and then solve. Mine's an alpha, enter, 40,540. And again, it comes out as negative, because of the way the calculator is designed. It doesn't mean you have negative cash. So you could use the formula that's on the page there or your apps calculator, apps in your calculator. I'm gonna quit out of my apps, take 1.08 in my calculator, carrot top, little symbol, and 17. I get a number of 3.7, Zero, 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 blah, 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 some more numbers. Multiply that by 150,000. Ah, something's wrong there. Didn't come out right. Oh, not multiply, divide. Divide that by 150,000. 3.7, zero, 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 one, eight, zero, five, five, 40,000, five, four, oh. Your parents set up a trust fund for you 10 years ago that is now worth $19,671.51. If the fund earned 17% per year or 7% per year, how much did your parents invest? Again, take 1.07 to the 10th power, divide that result into 19,671.51. So 1.967151. $10,000, or you can use your apps. For a given interest rate, the longer the time period, the lower the present value, because there will be more interest in that than there would be um, in a 10-year investment than there would be in a five-year investment. So there we go. What is the present value of $500 to be received in five years, assuming a 10% interest rate? Take 1.10 to the fifth power, divide that into $500, $310. So the present value, assuming only a five-year investment, 310. But you can see if you take 1.10 to the 10th power, divide that into $500, now you're looking at a present value that's much lower because the investment is longer. There's more interest in that $500 because interest was being earned for an extra five years on that. And you could see the difference there. So there's an extra $118 of interest earned on that because of those extra five years of just sitting there as an investment earning 10% interest.
what is the present value um, if the interest changes to 15. So I'm going to go into my apps for this one, hit finance, TBM solver. Now my N is five years. Interest rate first is 10. I'm going to go down and make my fair value 500, future value, sorry, future value 500. Use my arrow keys. So my cursor is at PV, alpha enter, 31046. The only thing I'm going to do is change my interest rate to 15. Go back down to PV, alpha enter, 248.59. So you can see for a given time period, the higher the interest rate, the smaller the present value. Again, because more interest is being earned to get to that $500 when there's a 15% interest than when there's a 10. So less interest comes out when there's 10% as your interest rate. So what is the relationship between present value and future value? Well, we saw it, right? Present value is what a dollar is valued at today. Future value is what it's worth at some point in the future given an interest rate. So suppose you need 15,000 in three years. If you can earn 6% annually, how much do you need to invest today? So I'm in my apps. My N is three. My interest rate is six. I'm going to use my arrows to go down to future value because I need 15,000 at the end of three years. So that's a future value. I'm going to use my up arrow, alpha enter. My present value looks to be 12,594.29. So that's how much I need to invest at time zero to reach that 15,000. I'm going to quit my apps and try calculating this with my formula. 1.06 carat top to the third power. Divide that result into the future value of 15,000. And I get 12,594.29. If you can invest the money at 8%, would you have to invest more or less at 6%? Well, we know how much we have to invest at 6%. So let's see. If we take 1.08 to the third power, we take that result and divide it into our future value. you would need to invest more to earn 6%, less to earn 8%. 11,907 is how much you have to invest to earn 8%. Okay, so um, remember they're giving us the basic PV equation refresher again. There are four parts to the equation. There's always present value, future value, R, rate of interest, and T, time period. So if you know any of the three, you can solve for the fourth. So now we're going to start kicking it up a notch. And you can use a, a financial calculator um, to do the calculation. But we have to be careful when we're using a financial calculator. And I'll... I'll you know, give you the signal what they're talking about in that last bullet in a second. So sometimes we want to know what the implied interest rate is on investment. What does this mean? We have $10,000 today. We need $12,000 in two years. What kind of investment rate of return do we need to find? What type of interest rate on the investment does it need to be to reach that goal? We can do that. Um, we could rearrange our basic present value equation and solve for that. 
and it is future value over present value to the um, one over t power minus one. Okay, so if you are using formulas, you will want to make use of both the y to the x, y to the x keys on your calculator, and the one over x key on your calculator. And I'm trying to find mine on, I don't use them, so I'm not used to seeing those. I have to look around. Okay, but keep that in mind. So I'm just going to stop one second. I'll be right back. Make sure. Okay, sorry about that. I needed to do a little work on my calculator to make sure I was um, explaining to you how to enter this information we're about to look at. So you're looking at an investment that will pay $1,200 in five years. So if you do your little timeline, the rightmost future value is 1200. The leftmost is a thousand because you have a thousand dollars to invest today. And the time period is five. So going back to the previous slide, if we take future value 1200 divided by present value um, to the one number of periods power one over number of periods power. So here's how I do it. First I find one divided by five. So that's the point two power. Then I take 1200 divided by 1000. So you do everything in parentheses first, right? 1.2, 1.2 carat top point two power. I get 1.03714. Subtract the number one from that. That's your interest rate, 3.714. Now, if you're in your apps, it's much easier. One for your finance, one for your TVM. N is five. I is what you're going to be solving for, so you can arrow, arrow over that. Now, since you know your present value and your future value, you need to make one of them a negative. And the negative you use is on the number pad. It's at the very bottom where it's a zero, and then you usually have your point for your decimal, and then there'll be a little minus sign in parentheses. So I'm gonna put my PV in with that little minus sign, 1000, because that's the uh, value today. Then I'm gonna put my future value in as a positive. So one of them has to be negative, and one of them has to be positive, because of the way the calculators are designed or else you'll get an error. I'm gonna arrow back up to my interest rate so my cursor is flashing there. Alpha, enter, and you get 3.714. So you can use the formula or your apps in your calculator. Suppose you are offered an investment that will allow you to double your money in six years. You have 10,000 to invest. What is the implied rate of interest? So you can use your app, which is N10, I'm sorry, six, six years, I'm sorry. N is six. I you're going to solve for, so I'm gonna arrow down. PV I'm gonna put in as a negative 10,000. And then I'm gonna go down to future value and make that 20,000 arrow back up to my interest rate so that my cursor is flashing and then I'll solve alpha enter 12.25. Now if you're using the formula, I'm gonna exit out of my app calculator. First thing I'm going to do is my fraction, one divided by six. So that's the power I'm going to raise my result in my parentheses, 20,000 divided by 10,000, two, two to the 0.1667 power, then subtract the number one from that result, 12.25%, 0.1225. 
So either way, you get the same answer. Suppose you have a one-year son and you want to provide $75,000 in 17 years towards his college education. You currently have $5,000 to invest. What type of interest rate must you earn on that money to reach the $75,000? So again, I'm going to take 1 divided by 17. Then I will take 75,000 divided by 5,000. That result I will raise to the one divided by 17th power or 0 0.058823529. Subtract the number one from that result and I get 17.27%. And you could use your app as well. So what are some situations in which you might want to know the implied interest rate? We've seen it already. I need to get this much money. I want to save $20,000 for a down payment on a house. How much can I invest today if I'm making 5% interest? How long do I have to wait to reach that? Or, I'm sorry, you have 10 years. What kind of interest rate do you need to reach that? So you can invest 500 today and receive 600 in five years. The investment is considered low risk or you can invest the $500 in a bank account paying 4% interest. What is the implied interest rate for the first choice and which one should you choose? Okay, well, again, take future value. Well, first of all, one divided by five, that's my power. Future value divided by present value, 1.2. Raise that 1.2 to the 1 over 5 power, 0.2, you get 1.03713. Subtract 1. So you're only earning 3.714% interest. So you're better off with the bank account. You'll earn more interest over those five years. The next and final area we'll look at is the length of time. So now we know present value. We know what we can invest. We know what we need in the future. We know the interest rate. Now we're going to determine how long we need to invest it. So now we're going to be using our log keys. So future value equals present value times one plus R to the T. So T is going to be the inverse. Future value times over present value divided by the inverse of one plus r. This is, this is getting crazy with our formulas, right? But we need to know how to use our different um, um, items on our calculator in order to achieve this. Or we got that beautiful app. So I've been a little rusty on some of these. So I'm going to have to get myself together here. Um, so I'm just going to put you on hold one second. You won't even. Okay, I'm back. Uh oh, I'm way off too on my side. So let me um, get to our slide we need to be at. All right, finding the number of periods. So um, I'm using the log function on my calculator, log. So the first thing I do is take the future value divided by the present value and that result I'm going to find the log of it. I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm going to divide it by the log of one plus the interest rate. You want to purchase a new car and you are willing to pay $20,000. So future value is $20,000. If you can invest at 10% per year, and have $15,000 right now. So present value is 15,000, future value is 20,000, interest rate is 10%. How long will it take you before you have enough money to pay cash for the car? Now, using the formula, we would take 20,000 divided by 15,000, 1.333. I'm going to hit the log button and put 1.33333, enter. Remember that result. 
then I'm going to take 1.1, 1, 1 plus the interest rate. Oops, I'm sorry. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to hit log 1.1, 1, 1 plus the interest rate, enter. And I get 0 0.041392. Now I'm going to take the result I got from my first log function, which is 0.1249376. I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to divide it by the second log, 0 0.0413927. And I get 3.02, 3.02 years. I could do this in my apps so much easier. Apps, finance, time value of money. N is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to just hit my arrow key. Interest rate is 10. Present value will be I'm going to put it in as at minus 15,000. Remember the minus sign on your number pad. Future value is 20. Make sure 20,000 is in future value. And then arrow back up to your N, alpha, enter, 3.02. So either way. Suppose you want to buy a new house and you currently have $15,000 and you figure you need to have a 10% down payment plus an additional 5% of the loan amount for closing costs. Assume the type of house you want will cost about $150,000 and you can earn 7.5% per, per year. How long will it take before you have enough money for the down payment? So. Present value is 15,000. That's how much you have today. I'm gonna to exit out of my apps, clear. Future value, we have to calculate. The house is going to be 150,000. Whoops. We're going to need 15% cash in the future. 10% for a down payment plus 5% for additional costs or 22,500. We know the interest rate is 7.5%. So first, I'm going to take the future value and divide it by the present value, 22,500 divided by 15,000. And then I'm going to find the log of that 1.5. Then I'm going to find the log of 1.5. 0 0.075, 0 0.03140084. I'm going to divide the log from my numerator of 0 0.1760926 divided by the log from my denominator 0 0.031, oops, 14085. And I'm getting 5.6. Let's see. Nope, I'm close. 5.6 is my number. They're coming up with 5.14. Oh, I'm sorry. That's because my number's off a little bit. What are they doing to me here? What are they doing? I must have read that wrong. I'm sorry. Let's see. Plus an additional 5%. I calculated wrong. I do apologize. So first, they want us to figure out 150,000 minus 10% of 150,000 or 15,000. The difference, 100, 135,000, 5% of that will be in addition or 6750. I thought it was 15% overall. I apologize. So let me go back to this answer. So we did our calculation correct. We just based the on a wrong future value. The future value should be 21,750. And I read that incorrectly. So now instead, let's take um, 21,750 divided by 15,000. Take the log of 1.45, that result, enter. Then 1.0, oh, sorry, the log of 1.075. Then I'm going to take one, my numerator um, answer, 0 
680 and divide it by my denominator log here, 0 0.03140085. And I get 5.14 years. I could also do this in my apps, my finance, time value of money solver. We're solving for N, so we want to go down to I and put 7.5. Present value would be minus 15,000, and future value would be the 21,750. Arrow back up and solve for N, 5.14. Sorry about that confusion. So what might you want to compute the number of periods for? So we saw a few already. Suppose you want to buy some new furniture for your family room. You currently have 500 and the furniture you want costs 600. You can earn 6% interest. How long will you have to wait if you don't add any additional money? So I'm in my apps and I'm going to put six in the interest rate, PV as a minus 500, future value as 600. Have 500 today, need 600. I'm gonna arrow back up to my N, alpha enter, and I'm getting 3.13 years. But let's do this with our formula. So first we're going to take future value, 600, divided by present value, and find the log of that number. So I hit log 1.2, enter. Remember that number. Now I'm going to take the log of one plus the interest rate, 1.06, enter. Now I'm going to divide, um, first I'll enter my numerator result, 0 0.079181246, and divide it by my denominator result of 0 0.025305653. And I get 3.13, same answer. You can use Excel. Now, I don't require Excel, but there's some great formulas for time value of money within Excel. Um, fair value, present value, determining the rate, determining the number of periods. So let's click on the Excel spreadsheet here and hopefully it'll continue to share. I'm just gonna make sure There we go. And here is our worksheet. So you have $10,000 to invest. You will need the money in five years and you expect to earn 8% per year. How much will you have in five years? Well, what are you looking for? You know the present value, you know the number of periods, the NPR, and you know the rate. So you can use the future value formula to calculate that. So how you would do that is click on formulas and we click on financial and you can scroll down and click future value. So the rate we know 0 0.08. The number of periods are five. There's no payment. We know the present value 10,000. Click solve, click enter. Oh, what happened? Oh, I took it in twice. Oh, I see. The formula was already in here. What it did was, if you notice, future value G5, there's your rate, G4, the number of periods, and G3, the present value. And when you enter, it gives you your result. So another way to calculate these values in Excel. So that's a future value. Let's look at a present value using an Excel formula. So in your formulas, you would go into financial, present value. In this case, you know what you need, 150,000 in 18 years, that's the number of periods, and the 6% interest is your interest rate. So you would, it's up here, equals PV, 
present value is your formula, G5 is your rate, G4 is the number of periods. It's a zero is probably for payments. We ignore that. The PMT, that doesn't factor into our calculation. And then future value is 150,000. So we would separate them with commas or the cell G3. And it's good to use cells because you could change this very easily and get a different computation. Let's say you wanted 200,000 under these same circumstances. It automatically tells you how much you need to invest today. So take a look at these. If you're into Excel, the rate, it has a formula in there for rate. You need to know your number of periods. Don't worry about the payment, the present value and the future value. So notice G5 is the rate, I'm sorry, the number of periods, NPR, PMT is zero, PV is G3, and future value is G4. That's where the number is housed. Complete that, and then you have your percentage. And you could do the same thing with the number of periods. There's a formula for that. If you know the interest rate, PMT, don't worry about. You know the present value and the future value, you could fill them all in and you get your answer. Notice, and they, they bring this to your attention. Notice that the spreadsheet has the same sign convention as calculators with positive inflows and negative outflows. So when you're entering your formula, this doesn't um, make as much of a difference. It's more for the rate. Take a look at this. One of the, form, the, present, one of the values is entered as a negative. If not, you're gonna get an error, same here one of the values, a present value or future value is added as a negative. Okay, great. So some Excel. So I'm gonna come back over and share my presentation and let's wrap this up. Um, there are financial calculators online. You can go and you should get, try working out this uh, example here on your own. Um, just a great table to refer to for the various formulas and what each variable and formula stands for. Okay, and finally, a comprehensive problem. So here we have $10,000 to invest for five years. How much additional interest will you earn if the investment provides a 5% annual return when compared to a 4.5% annual return? So that's a difference of finding future value. So you could use your formula or your app or go use Excel. So I'm going into my app. That's what I'm most comfortable with. So five years. First, my interest rate is 5%. I'm gonna be solving for future value. So I'm gonna put present value of 10,000 and solve for future value. So under a 5% interest rate, I will have $12,763, just to round to the nearest dollar. I'm gonna go back up and change my interest rate to a 4.5 and go down and solve. And I get an answer of $12,462. So a difference of about three, no, $300. How long will it take your $10,000 to double in value if it earns 5% annually? So my interest rate is five. My present value is 10. My future value is 20. Don't forget, put one of those numbers in as a negative. Now go up and solve for N, or you could use the log um, formula, 14.21 years. Finally, what annual rate has been earned if 1,000 grows to 4,000 in 20 years? Now I'm still using my app. So I'm gonna put N is 20, leave the interest go for now. Present value is negative 1,000. Future value is 4,000. Because if invest 1,000 in 20 years, you're gonna have 4,000. Now I'm gonna solve for my interest and I'm getting 17.18. 
So that's a great um, introduction into using present value and future value, not only to find dollar amounts of investments, but production, help us to determine how long we have to invest our money, what kind of interest rate we need to invest at um, during, to, to reach a goal. So actually we did a lot of work with our calculator in here. So we are going to, um, I think actually I ran over to the calculator uh, PowerPoint, but that's okay. So we're going to end our discussion here. Any kind of questions at all on using your calculator, please make sure that you post them. Don't forget Google's a great res um, resource as well. That's what I've been using when I get confused. And, um, uh, Post your questions.